Hi, this is Dina for Split Coat Stampers. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create the look of batik using layers of color and heat embossed images. This technique really builds on the embossed resist technique, which you're probably familiar with, and it has some fun applications, especially for building scenes or backgrounds. To get started, you'll need some durable smooth cardstock or smooth watercolor paper and some solid stamp images. For this first card, I want to make a background that recreates the kind of blurred light effect that's popular in photography. So I'm starting with a white background and stamping a few circles in Versamark ink, and then I'll emboss the images with clear powder. The next step is to add a layer of color over the embossing, and you can see there where the embossing powder is resisting that watercolor that I've used. This technique works best with transparent colors, so you'll want to choose colors that blend together well, um, either shades of a single color or maybe a set of all warm or all cool colors. For this card, I'm using a set of blues. It's also important to dry your panel before you go on to another layer of embossing. So you can do that with either a heat tool or paper towel or an embossing buddy. To continue building up my background, I'm stamping the same images at different angles right over my first layer of embossing and coloring. And where the images overlap, the first layer of embossing acts like a mask. So each new layer will look like it's behind previous layers, sort of backwards from how we're working. We're working from front to back, foreground to background. Also, each new layer will take the color that you added in the previous step. So here you can see as I add a slightly darker shade of blue that my first embossed images are still white and my second embossed images have taken the color that I laid down after the first layer. I'm going to repeat the same steps again, stamping the images, overlapping previous images, embossing, and then adding another shade of blue to the panel. Again, it's important that your panel is dry each time before you add another layer of embossing, but be careful using your heat tool too much. You can actually overheat the embossing powder and it will soak into your paper. Then you won't get a good batik effect when you remove the powder. If you can let it air dry, or use a paper towel or embossing buddy to dry, that's probably better. I want just one more layer of dimension to my background, so I've added more stamped images and I'm embossing, and I'll add one more layer of darker blue to my panel before moving on to the next step. If you want to add any stamped line images or texture to your background, now would be the time to do that as well. For the next step, you'll need an iron and some newsprint. If you can get plain unprinted newsprint, that's best, but you can also use newspaper, coloring book pages, or telephone book pages for this step. You'll sandwich your panel in between several sheets of newsprint. You'll want at least one or two sheets underneath your iron, between your iron and the panel. And you'll iron through those sheets until the embossing powder on your panel lifts from the panel and soaks into the newsprint above it. You'll want to keep your iron moving so you don't scorch the paper and you may need to move your panel to another page if the sheet above it seems like it's saturated with embossing powder. You might need to move it two or three times until all the embossing powder has been lifted out. Here's that completed panel on a card, and I love how this technique allows some of those lights to look like they're further away and some are more in focus and closer. This technique is also really great for building scenes. If you do choose to do a scene, you'll need to decide which images you want to appear in the foreground and which images you want to be in the background of your scene. As you stamp, you'll be building your scene from front to back. As I build scenes, especially these floral scenes, I usually begin toward the bottom of my panel and work up as well. On this card, I'm working with Versamagic chalk inks, and these are great inks for blending right on the surface of your cardstock or hot press watercolor paper. They blend well together and move really easily on the surface of the card. I'll dry the panel and then continue on to another layer of embossed images and coloring. Again, remember to dry the panel completely before you emboss again. On the next layer of color, I'll show you what happens when you forget. 
I'm going to continue building my scene toward the background, adding another layer of floral images slightly higher than the last row of flowers that I stamped. I added a layer of orange ink and I got so distracted here by changing my image that I forgot to dry the ink before adding another layer of stamping. So I want you to notice what happens here after I add the embossing powder. Because that chalk ink wasn't finished drying, the embossing powder has stuck to the entire top half of my panel. And you may want that effect, so don't think that it's a mistake. It just wasn't really what I meant to do at this time. So if you want clear edges to your stamped images, it's important to dry between layers. You can see here that I had to change my plan a little bit because the color I had originally chosen didn't show up against all that embossing powder. And if I hadn't said anything, you probably wouldn't have noticed, but I want you to be able to learn from my mistakes. As I did before, I've placed the panel in between a few pages in my telephone book, and I'll iron until all that embossing powder is lifted from the panel. Because there's a lot of embossing powder on this panel, I'll have to move it several times to get it all to lift. Here's that panel on a completed card, and you can see how there could be more contrast in the background. Here's a more successful version that I did for the photo tutorial and another sample that I did using some distress inks for the background, some different effects with watercolor. You can even use this technique with a very thin layer of acrylic paint. That's what I've done on this sample. With too much paint, the embossing powder will soak into the card instead of lifting. But lots of different options for this tutorial, lots of different looks and lots of different effects. I hope you'll try it out. Thank you so much for watching.